Hello Lexington, I am Kevin Hall, the communications officer here for the Lexington Fayette County Health Department. We are masked up here outside the Dr. Ricey Leach community room to talk to you in our big celebration today about our harm reduction program. It's almost ready to turn five years old. It'll turn five on September 4th, but we're celebrating a little early today. So I'm gonna turn this, or before I turn it around, I guess, and have John Moses talking to you. We're gonna go through and talk to some of our staff. I want you to take a few minutes to let, uh, to invite some people, tag some people, share this, get some people involved. Mask is gonna slip. Let me get that pinched up there. Uh, we get some people involved so we can celebrate. We're gonna be talking about the history of the program, why this is so important. So we thank you, we thank you for joining us. Before we get started here, let's, I'm gonna turn this camera around. Just come over here. So this is the, like I said, the Dr. Rice C. Leach Community Room. John will explain the purpose of the ribbons there. Sure. John Moses, uh, welcome. Tell uh, tell the people watching a little bit about who you are. Sure, I'm John Moses. I'm the team leader for harm reduction services here at the Fayette County Health Department. We're so excited to have you with us today so that we can share a little piece of our celebration um, in on September 4th of 2015, we started a, a, a needle exchange here at the Lexington Fayette County Health Department. We had a few participants that first day. We had no idea that it would grow to the program that it is today. Um, to date, we have um, had more than 1.5 million needles returned to us for safe disposal. We have seen over 6,000 unique clients here in Fayette County, and we've been able to put over 300 people into treatment for substance use disorder. We're gonna take you in, let you meet some of our staff. Some of them are new, so we're getting to know them as well, and let you know what all we do here at the health department and our harm reduction services. Right. Come on in. We've got some people watching and just said, so hi, Megan, thanks for watching and joining us. John, uh, one thing too, again, we're telling everybody, you know, we are masked up here. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're following the guidelines so we can be healthy during and uh, protect people during COVID-19. Tell, tell the people a little bit about what normally happens here. Sure, so normally we um, have our syringe exchange program set up outside. We have a mobile unit. Um, it's currently having some repair work done, and so we'll be back up and running with that soon. Um, but we set up in the parking lot, we do our syringe exchange, and despite COVID, um, we have been able to continue all of our other ancillary services, hepatitis C and HIV testing, referrals to treatment, naloxone distribution, both to our participants and in the community and the jail. So we're blessed to have so many different partners that work with us to make this program possible. Um, we are entering the Ricey Leach community room. Dr. Leach was the mastermind behind all of this. He knew a long time ago that syringe exchange was a needed service here in Kentucky. And when the state passed the law in 2015 to allow us to do syringe exchange, um, he was thrilled. And Unfortunately, he passed before he could see how much this program had really grown, and we miss him a great deal, but I think he would be so proud of what we're doing today. All right, we got a note here from Anna watching. She says, I'm here watching, very happy to be celebrating five years of the harm reduction. Congratulations to all the workers, and, and we're going to meet some of those workers, but John, it's also congratulations to the people who come through here. You mentioned that we had nine people the first day. Those are nine people who took that first step to come to a government agency and say, hey, I'm, I use drugs and I need some clean needles. Can you help with this? And Absolutely, and how we treated those first people that came through the door was most important because they were going to, back, going to go back and tell their friends how they were treated and what it was like. And we got nothing but good feedback. When we started our program, we went into the jail and we talked to community members to find out what our program should look like. And we got all kinds of feedback. And Dr. Leach always told us to start small and grow from there. And that's exactly what we've done. Um, we've grown to an incredible program here. Um, even though COVID has played a big role in isolating people, we know that there are still a lot of overdoses and a lot of need for our services. 
Last month was our biggest month. We had over 1,700 participants come through, and it's taking that first step into a healthcare system that helps them to get on track, taking that first step to improve their health. All right, John, let's go meet some of the people who are making this so wonderful. So after you. Sure. So one of our um, partners that we work with is UK and a program called CURP. It's the Kentucky Income Reinvestment Program. It's part of Ryan White Funding. And this is Barbara Davis. Hello. She is um, here with us and she helps in the syringe exchange. And she's gonna tell you a little bit about what she does. Hi, uh, my name is Barbara Davis. I wanna say congratulations to John Moses and our team on the five year anniversary. Um, I am the um, risk, and re risk reduction specialist here at the Fayette County Health Department, although I am a UK employee. Uh, so I do all the HIV and Hep C testing uh, within the needle exchange. Um, so the test that I do is a rapid test. It's a rapid HIV test, which takes literally about two minutes. And then uh, I do a rapid a a Hep C test, which takes probably less than five minutes. Uh, we, as you see, we have plenty of condoms. Um, we do give out condoms, we give out brochures about HIV, Hep C, um, and STDs. We do referrals to the Bluegrass Care Clinic. Um, if we happen to have someone that is diagnosed with HIV, just let you know that there are plenty of services out there for that. Um, and we also do referrals to the Bluegrass Care Clinic for all of the Hep C uh, tests as well. So we uh, do walk-ins for HIV and Hep C testing on Fridays, starting from 8.30 until 4. So thank you for joining in. All right, Barb, thank you. And thank you for all you're doing to help Lexington be well. We had a comment from a participant. Lucinda Baker says, what a great program. Lucinda, we agree. And thank you for your comment and for watching. And Tell people about this because that's how this program will continue to grow and help people. John, let me ask you something uh, that Barb mentioned that's so important about the hep C and HIV. That's the reason this whole program got started. It, Absolutely. It, this is not about the syringes or the needles. This is about stopping the spread of HIV and hepatitis C. Um, at the end of 2014, we were lucky, if you could say, that there was an outbreak of HIV in southern Indiana. And that kind of led to Kentucky passing the law for us to be able to do syringe exchange. And we know that syringe exchange works. Um, it reduces the number of people that are sharing needles, but it's also, like I said before, that first time they may touch a healthcare system and we can offer them so many other services along their journey. Um, Barbara has over 30 years experience <laughs> in the field of HIV, and we are certainly blessed to have her here with us. All right, thank you for that. And Lucinda also says she tells her students about the program, and whether those are high school age, whatever age, college age, whatever these students, thank you for that, because you don't know who needs this program. It could be students, it could be their family members, it could be their friends, and just letting people know about this can change lives, save lives. So thank you for that, Lucinda. John? Absolutely. Let's go on into the Rice Sea Leach community room. This is where all the action normally happens um, when we're not outside. Um, hopefully we'll be back in this area um, once COVID has um, finished with us. Um, but the next person I'm gonna introduce you to is Chelsea Reed. She is also part of the Kentucky Income Reinvestment Program. And we are thrilled to have her here. She has a wealth of experience in interpersonal violence and has been a great asset to our team. Uh, before, got a quick note here. Shelly uh, with Voices of Hope uh, is watching and says that Voices of Hope Lexington is grateful for five years of service to Fayette County. Congratulations. And Shelly, thank you to your organization. You all have been a part of this, uh, continue to be a part of this. And it, uh, John will talk a little bit about all the need for collaboration and how many, there's too many people and groups to name to, to cover everyone. But Shelly, thank you for that. And we'll get to some of that later. Chelsea, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. So again, my name is Chelsea Reed and I'm actually um, a colleague here with Barbara Davis and a part of the CURT program from UK Healthcare. And today, one of the things we're actually doing is preparing for um, a really significant and important upcoming date. That date is August 31st. 
August 31st is International Overdose Awareness Day. And just a moment ago, you were talking about the significance of collaboration for this program. And one of our great partners that you'll get to hear from shortly is actually LSUCG. And a big part of their campaign that they're putting together for Lexington for International Overdose Awareness Day is um, this Silver Ribbon campaign. And right now today we're trying to get our silver ribbons put together to have on display here at the health department to share with our participants in the program, to share with staff here at the health department so that we can all um, come together as one community with one voice and hold space for those who have been impacted by overdoses. All right, thanks a lot. We have yeah. another comment from Casey, uh, who is a former board chair, still a member of our Board of Health. She says, so proud of this crew and Casey, uh, as you well know, we couldn't do this without the board. We couldn't do it without the government, uh, the city council, the mayor, whether uh, current mayor, Linda Gordon, who sent her note of thanks today, or previous mayor, Jim Gray. Uh, we appreciate that. Andrea James just signed on and said the health department is pivotal. John, before we go on to some else, someplace else, let's look at this sign back oh, here. Oh, yes. This is um, a sign that was made um, right when we first opened our syringe exchange, everyone involved in the program uh, did their hands in paint to make this beautiful mural to remind us that here at the health department, we have um, a host of individuals that support this program. And without all of these people, none of this would ever have been possible. And Chelsea was right. The partnerships that we make along the way are crucial, not just with UK, but with the Kentucky Injury and Prevention Center. They provide us grants to do education in the jails. Um, the LFUCG Department of Social Services does all of our treatment referrals. We have other partners, New Vista, um, the Chrysalis House, Voices of Hope, um, anybody that we can get to partner to try to support this program is always welcome. We've had hospitals come through uh, to learn about the program. We've had doctor's offices, students from UK, uh, Western, Murray, uh, which I mean, you're getting students from Murray to come in to learn about it. That's phenomenal. And they were medical students too. So that's really great reaching them. We have two more comments. Andrea also added that the health department's a pivotal partner that is essential to public health efforts. And Paula Anderson, who is a former board chair, she says, amazing that it's been five years. Dr. Leach would be so proud. And Paula, thank you for that. Uh, and speaking of Dr. Leach, right here, this is his handprint that was on there. But uh, forgive me for being a bit corny, but his handprints are everywhere on this. They really are. It is a room named after him. And John, you and I have talked about it, the emotions that come with offering this service in a room that's named for him. And he never got to see it grow to what it was. Absolutely. Uh, we miss him dearly, but I think that he would be so proud of what we've been able to accomplish over the last five years. And it's also worth noting that our current commissioner, Dr. Craig Humbaugh, is a huge supporter of this. Uh, is often, when it's in this room, he's often down here helping in any way he can. And so uh, thank you also to Dr. Humbaugh for continuing that support. Next uh, person up, John, who yeah, are we going? Yeah, so let's step over here. We're going to meet Allison Ty. Um, she is one of our newest uh, employees in the harm reduction program, but not new to the health department. Allison comes to us with experience in disease intervention, uh, meaning that she tracked syphilis and HIV cases and did partner services. And we're thrilled to have her on board now with us as well. helping people um, and uh, I just learned about this uh, poem today this uh, unlike me this poem has been here since day one <laughs> and it was really important to uh, for the health department to um, get input from the community and they uh, before they started the program so they went into the jails and talked to people about um, what they would like to see out of this kind of program and someone uh, had given them this poem to um, to put in here and it's been here since day one and it's a it's a really nice nice poem i think 
It is. I try to read this poem at least once a month, and it reminds me and gets me grounded as to why we do what we do. And we'll take a picture of it later and, and post the full poem online as well. Absolutely. And and John, it's it's worth mentioning that when we started this, we talked with people who were in the detention center. We talked with people who would be using this program to get input. And I always like to say that one of the things they pointed out immediately, our first it was the colors we were using. We used red and black because those are the national colors for HIV in the HIV world. And they, we were told that we don't like that. That looks, it looks like a trap. It looks like blood. It looks like death. We want something else. And so that's the reason we went with the blue and green. And for us to be able to say that we built this, not from people who were sitting in offices thinking that this is the best. We went to people who would, who would use it, and we have continued that because we often get feedback from people on how we can improve uh, who are coming in, from people who are coming in. Yeah, that's exactly what harm reduction is. It's meeting people where they're at, and they're, it's giving them that autonomy. This program is theirs. It's not ours. And we um, have, over the years, had thousands and thousands of people come through, and it's always best practice for us to um, get input from them to see what they like and what they don't like about our program. All right, who to next, John? Uh, let's go to David. He is the backbone of this program. David um, does all of our administration work and uh, has been working in this uh, syringe exchange for over a year now. Yep, year and a half. Yep, welcome, David. Yep. All right, David. Um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about how an exchange works? And it, it's, as John has mentioned to me before, uh, with COVID, it's a little different now. Yeah. I think things move a little faster. But tell uh, just generally what you cover when somebody comes through for an exchange. Um, normally, it takes um, only about a minute when they come in here, if they've been here before. And we just get a little bit of information from them. Nothing too personal, no names. The whole program's anonymous. And That's a great point, too. We hadn't mentioned it. It is anonymous. Yes. Is um, the needle exchange and the Narcan distribution, um, the no IDs, anything like that at all. But we just get a little bit of information from them. Uh, usually we ask them what supplies they might need with their needles. And uh, we have, we give out Band-Aids, alcohol wipes, cotton balls, and caps here for them. Um, we also have other... Uh, supplies that uh, we give out as needed. We got bottles of water. We got food. Um, so yeah, it's hygiene packets from time to time. All right, all right, David. Thanks a lot. I know you've got a this busy afternoon. You got to get yeah. set up and ready to go. Uh, John, what are the hours of operation for this for anybody who wants to come out? Sure, our syringe exchange is open on Mondays from one to four p.m. Uh, on Wednesdays from 3 to 6.30 p.m. and on Fridays from 11 to 4 p.m. Um, David made a good point about some of the things we give out to our participants. We have what we call a sharing shelf. We make sure that we always have bottled water and hygiene products for anybody that needs them when they come in. With that being said, we're always taking donations. We always need bottled water. We always need deodorant, shampoo, soap. Anything that can be donated to help people, particularly those who may be living outside. And as we get into the winter, we're going to need um, a lot more socks, clean underwear, and different things that people may need. All right. Where to next? Let's go to the big room. We're going to go and talk about naloxone, or Narcan, if you've heard of that. Narcan is a overdose reversal drug. This is Chris Smith and Ruth Stevenson. They both um, write all of our prescriptions and uh, distribute the Narcan for us here at the health department, out in the community, and in the jail. Chris is an amazing instructor. We have an amazing PowerPoint that he's put together. He's gonna tell you all about it. So when someone comes to the exchange and they want to get a new naloxone prescription, um, at that point, it goes from being an anonymous exchange to a confidential service. So we do ask folks to fill out um, some quick paperwork. Um, there's a folder here. It's just got a, a registration page and then an education page, just a couple names, a couple birthdays, a little bit of demographic information. Um, so then I'll have a seat over here at the table. 
And um, I'll sit here, and I have the PowerPoint here on the screen, but it's not really so much about the PowerPoint. It's really what we're doing is having a conversation. Um, you know, before I came to the health department, I was an ER nurse. I did that for about five years. I probably gave Narcan more than 100 times over five years. I have lots of experience with it. But when I teach the class, often the experience of the people that I'm teaching to is actually more valuable than my experience because those are the people who are right there when an overdose is happening. And so the skills that they bring, the insights that they bring, and the questions that they bring all make it into this presentation all the time. Um, I always make an effort to include those voices and incorporate those voices into this presentation. Um, uh, you know, Kevin is the communications officer, unfortunately. That burden falls on him. You know, how many times I have to revise that presentation over <laughs> and over. That's a burden on his office, but it's worth it, right? Because just like John was saying earlier, it's really important for us to listen to the people that we serve. In fact, that's one of the most central principles of harm reduction in general, that we center the people that we serve, that we listen to them, and that we honor their voices. Because it's by honoring those voices that we lift people up, that we help them be the best that they can be. So we're always trying to make this uh, naloxone distribution program um, embody that spirit, and not just say, hey, here's your Narcan, but really give people the skills that they need to approach something that's pretty scary, right? When someone's overdosed, when someone's not breathing, potentially right there in front of you, um, to help them be able to approach that in a way that they feel empowered and confident to be able to act and to be able to save someone's life if that's, if that's what it comes to. And I think one of the, having set through your class or set in your class, set through sounds like it was a negative, but having to been participated in it, you tailor it to the people that are in there. And that's what you were seeing about listening to those voices. and. It's also really worth noting that you're a nurse, Ruth is a nurse, but the people that you're talking to by and large coming through are not the medical professionals. So you put it in the real language that people like me and just the average person can understand because we have not been trained to respond like you all have in a medical emergency. And I think that is an, an important piece of it. So it, this is not a class, it's not a, like, a, like a lecture, or, or where you're just sitting here furiously taking notes. It is very active. It is, uh, I, I hesitate to say fun because it sounds a little too flip for what it is, but it, it's a good learning environment and we appreciate you doing that. I know Ruth is just itching to talk here. Uh, I'll, I'll let her say hi, then John can uh, say a little bit more about Ruth. But Ruth, uh, how long have you worked in, in harm reduction here? runs them to the clients, but then I have to put everything in the computer and keep count of all the Narcans that we give out. And Casey, who is watching, just said, carry the spray, save a life. That's important. We, we encourage everyone to carry it. And it's not just... Uh, whether you don't have to inject drugs or know anybody who does, you don't know when you're going to be somewhere in the community and need this. So, Ruth, Chris, thank you for what you're doing, helping likes to be well. John? Yeah, Miss Ruth is a little shy. She won't tell you what a great nurse she is and, and what a wonderful human being she is. But she's been at the health department for a really long time. She retired, but has come back to work with us during the week. Um, during our syringe exchange, and we couldn't do all of this Narcan without her. She um, is a huge asset to our program. Um, yes, yeah, so we were talking about um, our different partners, and um, a lot of times when people think of a syringe exchange, they think um, we've got to get people off drugs. We've got to get everybody off drugs, and that is not the end goal of our program. Like we said before, it's to stop the spread of HIV and hepatitis C. But on those times when people are in the building, they're here to do syringe exchange, if they feel like they might be ready for treatment for substance use disorder or need some help getting some referrals, our next person we're going to talk to, they are the ones that do it. These are our partners from the Lexington uh, Fayette Urban County Government. Department of Social Services. This is Amy Baker and Scott Llewellyn, and they are amazing, and they're going to tell you how amazing they are. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amy, uh, how long have you been doing this uh, with the uh, harm reduction program? Uh, for about four and a half years. Uh, you guys were talking about Dr. Leach a few minutes ago, so 
after the after the Board of Health and the City Council approved the exchange, uh, Dr. Leach and I started talking about doing treatment referrals, and so we started that process. And before we actually finished, he passed away. So we started um, probably in May, June of 2015, and we finished in. Uh, I think I was here September 2015. So. John's been here the longest, and then and then it's me. So we've seen lots of people come and go. The uh, and it's also a big a big shout out to Commissioner Chris Ford, uh, who used to serve on the Board of Health. Uh, I guess still is a representative of, on the Board of Health yeah. uh, when he was a council member. Now he's the Commissioner of Social Services, and has been a tremendous piece of this. Uh, Scott, you're a little newer yes. to, to helping. Go ahead, tell a little bit about your role. So um, Amy wrote a grant. She got a SAMHSA grant, a four-year SAMHSA grant that created a, um, a program to provide uh, Narcan community Narcan trainings and then this overdose uh, uh, outreach uh, service that we do here and also uh, throughout the community. Uh, I've been doing it about a year and a half. Um, and again, we just go out in the community do a Narcan trainings with our team, John and Chris and Allison and Chelsea and everybody and we go out like tomorrow we're having training at the Hope Center and then the other piece is we're here two days a week uh, you know just meeting people where they're at and getting them where they need to go all right thanks a lot John yes yeah, Scott mentioned about the Narcan or naloxone distribution that we do and we couldn't do any of that without uh, Lexington Fayette Urban County government and Amy and Scott uh, One million dollars out of that SAMHSA grant has gone to provide naloxone to our community and so we've been able to distribute it here in the community, in the jails, anywhere that somebody needs Narcan, we can get it to them. So if you um, know high risk individuals, if you have a big group that needs trained in Narcan or you need to have it on site, please reach out to us. And um, we can do right now because of COVID classes of 10 or less, um, but we can do back-to-back -back trainings as well if you have 20 or 30 people that may need Narcan and we have plenty of it to give away. So please reach out to us. A uh, couple things before we wrap up, John. I want to mention you, some of the community partners, particularly thinking about uh, Narcan, the UK College of Pharmacy and Dr. Dean Wormling and the UK College of Public Health, uh, particularly Dr. Svetla Slavova, who is a former uh, Rice Sea Leach Public Health hero winner. Uh, they were able to start the distribution of naloxone and then the city picked up with that grant uh, once the funding ran out through the University of Kentucky. Absolutely. Um, John, uh, what do you want to say as we close and finish this, this celebration? And the celebration doesn't end today. No, just the our actual celebration date is September the 4th. That will mark our fifth year anniversary to the day. We're going to be providing meals and things for our participants that day. So we wanted to do this ahead of time. But we um, mostly want you to know that this program is serving all of Lexington. You may not know it, or you may not think you know someone who uses our program, but it touches lives everywhere. It's not um, the um, stereotype of a person that you might have in your head that uses our program. It's mothers and fathers, it's churchgoers, it's athletes, it's all kinds of people that you may not know are using drugs or using needles and we open our doors three days a week and give them that opportunity to take that first step toward better health. All right. Um, th uh, I'm going to turn this camera around. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you for celebrating with us. If you watched it live, tag people, share it with people, put it on your page. If you're joining us after the fact, thank you for participating as well. Uh, if you need more information, go to lfchd.org. Uh, you can contact us through that like us on Facebook. We've got information on Twitter. Thank you for celebrating with us. This program changes lives, saves lives, and thanks Lexington for helping Lexington be well. We'll talk to you soon.